Hey everyone, Big Paulie back for a brand new Star Trek movie review. That's right, we are on the last of the next generation adventures, Star Trek Nemesis. And uh, this is going to be a good one because it stars Mad Max. Let's watch the film. Okay, so Star Trek Nemesis, the last of the next generation movies, unfortunately. Yes, whereas the original crew went on to do six big screen adventures, unfortunately Picard and crew would only get four. And this film came out in 2002, directed by Stuart Baird, um, and at the time was Perceived as the worst of the next generation movies. Uh, there was some slow bits in the middle. Um, and people just didn't grip the storyline. It just didn't work for them. And I must admit, um, for many years, it was always my last next generation movie to put on. Um, but... Watching it today, I don't know. I don't know what happened, to be perfectly honest, because I found it actually really exciting and remembering lots of great parts about it and nowhere near as bad as people made out back in the day and nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. And really, when you compare Nemesis to insurrection i actually prefer this insurrection always came across as an extended tv episode for the next generation this has a big movie feel to it more of a movie feel than insurrection does so the film starts out on romulus after a terrorist attack on the high council um, and it's determined that there's a new praetor a new leader uh, faction of Romulus um, that's creeping up through the ranks and trying to form this coalition with Romulus and basically wants to lead the armies and unite Romulus the way that it's never been done. There is a but to the story uh, and it's quite a big but. I like big buts and I cannot lie. <laughs> yes. So on board the Enterprise Something's happening that doesn't happen very often. A couple of crewmen are getting married. Yes, none other than old Beardy himself, Riker, and the lovely Troy. And after a really nice ceremony, also attended by Shut Up Wesley himself. Yes, um, blink and you'll miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, blink and you'll miss him. It's a shame there would have been... I don't even think he had a speaking part. I'm pretty sure he didn't. But uh, it would have been nice to have a bit more extended Wesley, even if Beverly told him to shut up. Shut up, Wesley. And Picard and crew get a message from Admiral Janeway herself. That's right, she's back after that long journey. And they promote her. She sends the Enterprise to Romulus uh, and, there, and the crew uh, meet up with this new Praetor called Shinzon, um, who isn't exactly what you think. It turns out that Shinzon is actually a, a failed clone attempt uh, of Captain Picard himself, or as Lou would call him, is that the bald Captain Kirk? Yes, the bald one. <laughs> and unfortunately, poor old Shinzon is dying, and uh, he wants to basically face his clone, uh, destroy the Enterprise and destroy Earth. And who do they get to play Shinzon? Tom Hardy. Tom Flippin' Hardy. Yes, 
for people that are not into Star Trek, you'd be like, what? Tom Hardy's in Star Trek? Yes, he was. That was actually our first glimpse into Tom Hardy. A very young Tom Hardy. Yes, um, he looks like a boiled egg. <laughs> but uh, this is the start of his flourishing movie career. And uh, watching it back now, you know, with him much more recognisable. And he comes across as such a good actor now. I thought back then he was putting it on too much. But it's so Tom Hardy. It really is. And uh, it's a joy to watch him on screen in this Star Trek adventure. And uh, yeah, embrace it for what it is. But we also get some other familiar faces. Well, some some under makeup. Uh, we get Ron Perlman. Now look, you can see old um, Tom Hardy there. And there's Ron Perlman. You know, Sons of Anarchy, Ron Perlman. Beauty and the Beast, Ron Perlman. We also get a uh, good old Jim Robinson from Neighbours, Alan Dale, with his short little bit at the beginning. We get Kate Mulgrew, of course, as Catherine Janeway. Uh, and we also get um, Dina Meyer from Starship Troopers, uh, under heavy uh, Romulan makeup. Uh, and also, I think there's a very short, uncredited cameo by X-Men director Brian Singer. He's only on screen for, like, even shorter than Shut Up Wesley. Shut Up Wesley. Yes, so um, yeah, it's it's actually not a bad film. I actually really enjoyed it this time, more than I've ever enjoyed it before. There's lots of action, uh, more action than I remember. There's some great scenes, you know, even though Star Trek V was a bad film, it still had great memorable scenes in it. The same with this uh, and some of the scenes in this. One of the great scenes in this is... Uh, Picard's attempt at Top Gear, yes, uh, by driving this buggy around this alien world, picking up pieces of a positronic data. Yes, earlier on they pick up a signal that there's positronic signals coming from this planet and it's the same technology that Data's made out of by Dr. Sung. And they go and explore and they find a replica of Data, a pre-data, a prototype data, and uh, Data decides to da uh, download all his memories and all his fuzzy electronics and all that kind of shit. <laughs> and his neurons into the prototype whose name is B4. Yes, he didn't come afterwards. He came before. Uh, one thing that I think would have made this film really good uh, is if we'd found out it was, in fact, law. Not B4. Law. Yes. Star Trek people will understand that. But uh, um, it's, it's good what they've done. I like what they did with the character. I did enjoy the other data. Um, but I felt that it would have been best served law, maybe pretending to be stupid. <laughs> and uh, turning a bit vengeful later on. But then they would have had the ending that this film had. So there's lots of battles, there's running around the Enterprise, shooting at these aliens, these uh, Riemann aliens, um, who come from the dark side of Romulus. They don't like the light, and um, it's a abomination of, the, of Romulans, that's how they see it. They think of them as like the outcasts. There's also a really great battle um, mimicking the Star Trek II uh, battle at the end in the nebula. And this is the Enterprise going up against Shinzon's massive warship uh, called the um, the Scimitar. And it's like equipped with a million photon torpedoes, multiple phaser backs. Probably it, it would fire a couple of photon torpedoes and blow the Enterprise up. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a really impressive ship and we have a really nice action scene set also in, around this nebula. There were some great character moments with Troy and Riker, uh, with Data and B4 and also with Geordi. Uh, Worf doesn't really have too much to do in this film. He's sidelined, uh, the same as uh, Beverly Crusher as well. She's like yeah, off to the one side. Uh, in fact, I don't think we see her, actually. 
what for more than like three minutes on screen i don't think but the rest of the crew absolutely fantastic there's a great scene at the end uh between shinzon and picard uh with data turning up as well and i love the expression on data's face when he's left with no alternative but to sacrifice himself for his friend and his captain um, and the beautiful scene at the end with the toast reminded me of that scene skin of evil um, when they all toasted tashi yar's death uh, that brought a tear to my eye and so did this i don't remember getting so emotional in in um the scene in nemesis before but uh yeah it's a really touching scene and i love the end with b4 and how they've kept data's memory alive so yeah i really enjoyed that and even though it was the last of the next generation films uh, it did kind of close it out what with riker getting his own command on board the titan um the loss of data but it also kind of felt like maybe there was going to be another adventure but uh, unfortunately we never got one we would have to wait what something like 18 18 years or something something like that yeah probably about 18 years before we would see picard and data again uh in the picard series so yeah who would have thought that we would actually ever see this crew again on screen fantastic yeah so um yeah i really do enjoy star trek nemesis way more than i used to uh the picture quality was absolutely fantastic top notch uh but i have to give a shout out to the sound yes oh thank you very much yes i give a shout out to the sound it was in dolby true hd at 5.1 uh this was a monster of a soundtrack not just the fantastic Jerry Goldsmith theme tune uh, throughout the film, but the use of the surrounds when they're on board the ships, um, in the nebula, phaser blasts behind, um, echoing when they're in a, in a large room and the voice is echoing around. And as for the Enterprise flyby, in most Star Trek films, yes, it sounds like a Mustang flying past you. But in this film, the Enterprise sounded like a juggernaut. Seriously. Um, the use of the subwoofer on this film is fantastic. And it it rose. The, the entire soundtrack rose above lots of the other Star Trek films. So really impressed with the soundtrack on this one. Um, the film was just short of two hours. Uh, there are lots of special features on here, including a commentary uh, by Michael and uh, Denise Akuda, who were some of the design consultants on The Next Generation. Reunion with the Rikers. Uh, today's high-tech data. Robot Hall of Fame. Brent Spiner. Beyond. Uh, data and Beyond. So that's part four. Uh, Trek round table for nemesis starfleet academy uh lots of other blu-ray exclusives um star trek hq and a library computer plus over three hours of previously released content so some fantastic special features if you've got time to watch it all uh but yeah i did enjoy it um how would i rate star trek nemesis on a scale of one to ten um, I'm going to give Star Trek Nemesis seven and a half bald Tom Hardys. Yeah, I would never have given it such a high rating in the past, but I really had fun with this film. More fun than I've ever had. So um, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just getting old. Um, but I really enjoyed this time, this adventure. So, yeah, way more than Insurrection, the previous film. Um, and even considering that Nemesis is considered to be the worst of the films, I don't think it is. I think it is better than Insurrection. But, uh, yeah, seven and a half. Fantastic. OK, so that is the original Star Trek movies, one to six, and the next generation films, one to four. So that's ten Star Trek films all done. 
the next movie, we boldly go with a new crew. That's right. We jump on board the Enterprise with Chris Pine and crew and start a new trilogy of exciting adventures. And I will be reviewing all three of those films very soon. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Star Trek Nemesis. Like the video by giving it some thumbs up. Stick down in the comments. Do you like Star Trek Nemesis or don't you like Star Trek Nemesis? Am I liking it too much? Because I never liked it that much before. But I really surprised myself. And uh, as always. Shut up Wesley. Shut up Wesley.